What's up? My name is Techno, here for Troubleshoot, and welcome back to another video. In this quick video, I'll be talking about how to optimize the cycle frontier for the best possible FPS and the best competitive edge. Of course, being a game similar to Tarkov, you want to squeeze every bit of performance you can out of your computer to get the highest competitive edge over everyone else, even if it comes to sacrificing video quality for more stable, higher FPS. Anyways, without further ado, let's get straight into it. This video is not going to cover the Windows optimization side at all. Instead, in the description down below, you'll find Windows 10, Windows 11, and NVIDIA optimization guides to get the most out of your computer. And I highly recommend checking those out if you haven't already followed them, as they'll get you better FPS everywhere, not just the cycle frontier. When you've made sure Windows is up to date, you've optimized everything, you've closed down as many background apps as possible, etc, etc, all of the common sense things, open up Steam and we can fire up the cycle frontier. This game isn't by any means new, but it is still very deep in development, so things are always improving and getting better. When you get in game, you'll probably notice that things are much higher quality than you expected, as this game seems to optimize for your PC to the higher end if this is the first time you're playing it. Especially if you're watching, say, a video on another monitor, you'll see that things get really laggy as the game is eating a lot of your PC, even if you're not getting the highest FPS. Now, to keep track of my FPS in this game here, in the top left-hand corner, you'll see green text. That is the Steam overlay with the FPS counter enabled and high contrast mode on. Currently, I'm getting mid to high 70 FPS, which is reasonably good for an unoptimized game that's simply trying to pick its best settings for my graphics card, though you may also consider that low as I'm running a 3080 Ti. Regardless, hit escape when you're in game, head into settings, and inside of here we'll start on the video tab, where we'll get the majority of our FPS. First of all, I do recommend choosing your rendering device here, especially if you're on a laptop, as it may pick the wrong graphics card entirely. For me, I've selected my 3080 Ti. Then the display mode, you can leave this on windowed, but I've heard of people getting much better FPS in full screen, though others say windowed full screen. So that's really up to you, and if you want to, you can come back to this last. However, if you would like to customize your game further to get more FPS, you'll need to set it to full screen. When you do change it to full screen, you'll see that you're able to change the resolution. But of course, you don't really want to do this. You want to leave it on something that matches your monitor or is at least a compatible resolution for the clearest possible vision. Right below it, you may see the DLSS option if you have an RTX 20 or 30 series NVIDIA graphics card, in which case you can go ahead and mess around with these settings here to basically render your game in a lower quality window, a smaller window, and blow it up to full screen. This will usually dramatically increase your FPS, and this game is no different. The lower you go on this list, the higher your FPS will be, though you'll also notice some weird glitches and graphics artifacts if you push this to its extremes. So for now, I'd recommend turning this off, and that unlocks the resolution scaling setting right above it. This is the last thing you should mess around with, right before changing the resolution up here, as lowering this essentially lowers the number of pixels that it's cranking out, and it'll blow it up to be the full resolution scale. Things will look a little bit blurry, but nowhere near as bad as changing the resolution up here to something that's not compatible with your display. With the resolution out of the way, we can scroll down, and we have image sharpening. This has almost no performance impact, and this is pretty much entirely user preference. Change this as you see fit. Usually I'd leave this on at least a little bit to see things a bit clearer, especially in the distance. Max FPS, you can leave this on the default, or you can change it to better match your monitor. I'd always recommend going just a bit above what your monitor can do, as that should get you some better input latency and performance. You can, of course, crank this all the way to the far right to unlimited, though I wouldn't really recommend this especially if you're streaming or recording the game, because it will definitely eat away at your graphics card. And of course, if you're not capping the amount of FPS, your PC can use a lot more power, which is especially noticeable on a laptop. The FOV does have a FPS impact, however, I'd recommend having this set to user preference rather than trying to optimize it for the best FPS, as you need a good playing experience, especially in something this competitive. Gamma, once again, user preference, and this has pretty much no impact on FPS at all, so set it to what's right for you and carry on. The accessibility options, you can mess around with colorblind type, intensity, and interface scale, though these have no performance impact at all. Scrolling down even further, video quality options, I'd recommend turning this off as we will be changing some settings here. 
Starting at the very top, video quality, this changes all of the settings below it in this section here. You can set this to match your graphics card, whether it's a low, medium, high, or super high-end graphics card. I'd pick somewhere around here to start with. I have a 3080 Ti, so I could crank this all the way to epic, but for the best possible performance, I'd leave this around medium at highest. The draw distance is mostly for different assets rather than people, so you can set this to however you'd like, but you can set this higher in order to see further, which may be important for your specific playstyle. For me, I'll be leaving this on high. Shadow quality for something that's competitive, I'd absolutely recommend turning this down to the lowest possible for the highest possible FPS, as you're not going to be staring at shadows all the time. Same goes for post-processing quality, turn this all the way down for the best possible FPS, as you're not going to be staring at light and things like that when you're busy fighting aliens or people. Texture quality, this completely depends on the amount of VRAM in your computer, and this has almost no impact on FPS the higher you go, it just makes the game look a hell of a lot better but of course does require a lot more VRAM the higher you go up. You can leave this on medium if you're not sure, otherwise if you have a much higher end graphics card with more VRAM, you can crank this up to high or even epic to get better quality textures out of your game. Simply changing this one setting alone has little to no impact on FPS, however it does have a huge impact on how the game looks overall. If you're not comfortable with Epic, leave this on high and move on. Visual effects quality, once again, you're not going to be staring at pretty explosions, especially if you're on the receiving end. Crank this down to low and forget about it. Then foliage quality, there is a ton of foliage in these alien worlds. Crank it all the way down to low, unless for you you're struggling to see through trees and different things like that at a distance, in which case you can put this on medium, but rather leave this on low to begin with. Scrolling down to the very bottom, to get a pretty much instant boost in FPS, make sure VSync is turned off. This should always be turned off for the best possible FPS, and you should only turn it on if you're specifically receiving screen tearing, where the top and bottom half of your screen don't sync up. Show FPS, you can toggle this on in order to see an in-game FPS counter, but for me, I leave this off as I use Steam's. DirectX 12 mode, much like other games, is somewhat experimental and could improve your FPS on your hardware, though it's completely dependent on what hardware you have as to whether you see an improvement or in fact you lose FPS by turning on this option. So for now, leave this off, save everything, restart your game, see what FPS is like, then turn it on, save, restart your game, look around, and compare on your own computer. I'll be doing this in just a moment. Enable motion blur should be turned off, you'd like to see, especially when you're spinning around quickly. Multi-threaded rendering should be turned on for the best possible FPS, and you can enable GPU crash debugging, which can help the developers, and of course you, track down why your game is crashing. Though for me, I'll just be leaving this off, as it's extra collection of statistics and things like that in the background. It could affect your FPS, though I really doubt it. When we're done going through everything, you can go through the rest of the tabs here, though there's not much you'd need to change other than maybe muting your microphone here, and of course making sure push to talk is turned on. In a competitive stealth game like this, I'd absolutely recommend to keep push to talk on, unless you like holding your breath while you're running around. Binaural audio also can help you spin around and pinpoint things just by hearing where they are, because having things spatialized around you is usually the best way of playing stealth games like this. The rest of these tabs don't have anything really too important other than maybe subtitles, and field of view movement changes, having this on makes things look more realistic like sprinting around, and may have some impact on FPS, though they mostly have impact on people who suffer from motion sickness. Anyways, with all these settings changed other than DirectX 12 mode down here, I'll head back into the actual game, and there we go. You can see I'm sitting at 115, 120. We're pretty much in the low 100s, high 120s, 130s, 140. There's a huge improvement of probably 2x, though of course running around whatever direction you're looking in in different worlds, you can expect vastly different FPS. However, I've received pretty much double the FPS of what I had before, so this is a huge improvement over everything. Without further ado, let's go ahead and quit out of the game and see what DirectX 12 mode does for me. Or rather, I'll enable it first, then I'll restart my game. There we go, I'm back in game here, and I can see a marginal FPS improvement, though I'll wait for a second for everything to load in first. There we go, now that everything's loaded in properly, I'm sitting at 120, 130 FPS, Nothing seems too different, maybe it's a little bit higher or at least a little bit more stable, though definitely in the beginning while everything was loading, I'm definitely noticing a lot more micro stuttering. 
but it doesn't seem all that bad. For me, there's not too much of a difference, so I maybe would leave it here unless I notice some negative things happening, weird glitches, etc. But it's really not that bad. Heading back into settings, the next thing to change for the highest FPS impact, if you have it, is DLSS. I'll go ahead and turn this from off to auto, and let's see what happens. Well, a whole lot of not much. My FPS is already pretty high, so it's not trying to do anything. I would assume that during combat and things like that where your FPS is dropping, it'll try and dynamically change your DLSS mode, though of course that could cause you to lose FPS, especially in high intensity moments. So rather, I'd recommend keeping this stuck to something solid, like say, balanced. That's right in the middle. FPS hasn't changed a huge amount of gain, probably 20 FPS, which is a little bit. But as you can see on moving objects, especially while looking around, there's a bit of a blur around them, or at least some sort of artifacts left behind. You'll start to notice things, especially the lower you go, though your FPS should dramatically increase, especially on lower end, newer NVIDIA graphics cards that have DLSS. Settings, let's crank this all the way to the extreme of ultra performance, and let's see how my FPS changes. Not a whole lot, but you can definitely see on moving objects, including people, there's some weird glitching going on. They seem a bit blurry and pixely. That's the DLSS effect, though it does definitely work really, really well. Especially on shadows and lighting effects, you can see some weird things happening over there on the building just above my head, and coming up here, they sort of equalize. But if I go ahead and turn down DLSS to raise the resolution that I'm playing the game at, you should see that those artifacts disappear, and that's exactly what happens. For me, there's not a huge impact, but for you, they're very well maybe, so this is something you should play around with. After you've played around with DirectX 12 mode DLSS, the next thing to play around with is turning off DLSS and manually changing your resolution there. And finally, changing your resolution overall, to try and get more FPS if you really, really need it on super low end computers. Anyways, that's really about it for this long explanation video, going through a couple of different settings and showing you performance impacts in the cycle frontier. Once again, in the description down below, you'll find the Windows 10, Windows 11, and NVIDIA optimization guides to get even more out of your computer and anything else that may help you get FPS, you'll find them down there as well. My name's been Technoba here for Troubleshoot. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.